Hi everyone, my name is Nina Miller and I'm the Education Coordinator at Kimball Art Center in Park City, Utah. Today, we will learn about Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera was an important Mexican painter who helped establish the mural movement in Mexican and international art. Today, we will learn about his murals, symbols, and paintings of people. Then we will design and tell the story of community and neighborhood through our own designs. We will learn about Diego Rivera and his influences. We'll discuss murals and their history. We'll practice drawing people and learn about storytelling and art. In the end, we will create a mural design. The supplies you'll need are images of Diego Rivera's artwork, cardstock or Bristol paper, pencils, erasers, and oil pastels. Diego Rivera was born in Guanajuato, Mexico, in 1886 and died in 1957. When he showed art talent at an early age, his parents gave him a room in the house and let him paint on the walls. He studied at the San Carlos Academy of Fine Arts in Mexico City and traveled to Europe to continue learning about art. There, he met Pablo Picasso and became a Cubist painter. He also visited Italy and saw many frescoes from the Renaissance period. Back in Mexico, he started making paintings in public spaces like the frescoes he saw in Italy. Rivera wanted to make art that showed the life of the everyday person, the working class, people that were born in Mexico and everyday activities. At that time, he received funding from the government to create murals about the country's people and its history on the walls of public buildings. Rivera was in the United States from 1930 to 1934, where he painted murals also. These murals were sometimes controversial. He left a legacy of public art in Mexico, the United States, and around the world. Diego Rivera wanted to create art that depicted the everyday person, the working class, and people that were born in Mexico. Sometimes his work was often controversial, meaning not everybody agreed with what he created. Sometimes they would even ask him to remove certain parts. Diego Rivera continued to create his art no matter what people said, and he stuck to his ideas and beliefs. Let's take a look at some of Diego Rivera's influences for his murals. On the image on the left, Creation 1922 by Diego Rivera, we see direct ties to Scroveni Chapel made in Padua, Italy by Giotto. The Renaissance was a period of time from the 14th to the 17th century in Europe. Leonardo da Vinci was a Renaissance artist. Diego Rivera was heavily influenced by Renaissance artists and frescoes, as well as ancient Mexican wall art. We also see that he was influenced by Cubist artists, such as Pablo Picasso. Cubist artists show stories and emotions through different perspectives at the same time. Artists throughout history are always influenced by other artists. Now let's discuss murals and paintings. How are murals different from paintings? Well, a mural is a large painting made directly on a wall. Most public art can be seen and appreciated by people in the community. What's a fresco? A fresco is a painting done on the wall. See on the right, ooh, the School of Athens by Raphael. A true fresco is painted on plaster that is still wet. Have you ever seen murals or public art in public spaces? What was it about? How is a mural unique? Why do you think it is an important type of art? Well, for instance, a mural is in a public space, meaning anyone can see it at any time. And it's often painted on brick walls, sides of buildings, and it's not necessarily on a canvas or a piece of paper. Let's look at some examples of Diego Rivera's murals and how he uses symbolism and his characters to portray different stories and events. Let's look at Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in Alameda Park. 
there's a lot of symbolism going on in this mural. Specifically, let's take a look. Over here, this is Diego Rivera depicted as a child. He's holding hands with a Mexican pop culture icon, Calavera Katrina. He's also being protected by his wife, Frida Kahlo, who holds a yin and yang symbol. That's just a few symbols going on in this giant mural. We could talk about it all day long. Now, let's think about something. What does your everyday look like? What are some things that happen in your community? For example, at your school, outdoor activities, the park, the public places, your favorite activities, civic responsibilities, or just in general, your neighborhood. Before we start our final drawing, let's take a look at how to draw the figure. There's no exact standard. The adult figure varies from five to eight heads to the entire height. For a child, it's about four to five heads to the body. As we can see, it starts with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If we measure the head, we can fit that amount in the body. Just like that. Before we start our drawing, let's practice a little bit on how to draw the figure. First, let's look at a mannequin. Start with the head. Now, we'll draw a circle for the neck, and then we will draw a shape for the torso, just like that. Next, we'll draw a circle for the shoulder, another circle for the left shoulder, and then we will draw a long circle for the left arm, another circle for the elbow, another longer circle for the lower arm, a circle for the wrist, and then a, a shape for the hand. Let's start with the right. Same thing. Then we'll draw a circle for the stomach, lower torso. This will be for the hips. Then we will draw another circle for the upper thigh, right. Same thing as the arm, one, two, knee, calf, ankle, and then foot, just like that. When drawing the figure, it's important to always have a middle line. This line will always be changing depending on the posture of your person. Another tip is that usually the shoulders are about one and a half heads. Now let's get our materials ready so we can start drawing. Right now I have paper to practice on and then I have my long piece of paper to do my final drawing on. I also have pastels, oil pastels, and I have a pencil and an eraser. Right now, I'm gonna just start practicing drawing the figure. When we start drawing the figure, let's just loosely practice different positions and different gestures. Remember that line I was talking about before? That is the way that we represent movement. I'm gonna start with the head. Now, I want my figure to have their arms Here, I know I have to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep that line. And then I'll start like I was drawing the mannequin. Same over here. Don't forget the body the neck, and we'll just start by drawing loosely. Now that we've practiced drawing the figure, 
let's start thinking about what we want our final drawing to look like. For me, I'm going to draw a dog park because I love dogs and I think it's a really fun place where people can gather. I'm going to start writing some ideas down that come to mind. I started to sketch what my dog park would look like. I'm still using pencil to outline different forms and shapes. Don't forget to add a background. Here, I'm going to add trees because I love nature. Once you've done all of your sketching for your mural, you can start by adding in the pastel. Here, I'm going to pick out some colors that I like. Here's a green and here's a red for my ball and a brown for the dog. Let's start by adding in red for the ball. In Diego Rivera's murals, he used a lot of bright colors, so don't be afraid to try different colors in your mural. Once you finish your drawing, display the pieces side by side to create a mural. Discuss the story that the mural tells. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you next time.